So you're coming back to Destiny 2. Well, it happens to all of us. Whether you've been away six months, a year, two years, or three years, in this video, I plan to go over some key items, key tips, that will allow you to get into the game really quickly and understand changes have happened in the game. Now, I do plan to keep this video as short as possible, and if there are things you want to skip, you can use timestamps because depending on how long you've been away, there may be some items you're not curious about. The other thing is, I have more detailed guides all over my channels. I have new player guides, returning player guides, and also what I call beginner, intermediate, and advanced guides. Those are on playlist, and if you want more information, check those out. First off, let's talk about materials in the game. So materials have changed quite a bit. In Destiny 1 Destiny 2, you've always had plantar materials. Those are going away, so that's at least something. They've kind of simplified the economy. The primary things you're going to want to worry about is Glimmer. If you played the game before, Glimmer is how you purchase things in the game, especially bounties, stuff like that. It's the primary core thing that's used in the game. You also have a Senate Alloy, and this is primarily used for the weapon crafting system that came out of Witch Queen. If you want to get this, you primarily get this from doing Witch Queen activities, and there's sometimes some special quests that come along to give that to you as well. Ascended Shards. Ascended Shards are required for forging Masterwork gear. So, again, those are primarily purchasable from the Cryptarch, and also from doing challenging activities like Grandmaster Nightfalls, things like that. You also have Enhancement Cores. Enhancement Cores are what you use to purchase upgrade modules, which allow you to power up your gear, and also for forging Masterwork gear. These you can get from breaking down Legendary gear, from some activities, and from bounties. You also have Enhancement Prisms. Enhancement Prisms are required for forging Masterwork gear again, obtained from challenging activities, again, like we talked about, Grandmaster Nightfalls, things like that, or purchasable from the Crypt Arc. You also have Legendary Shards. This is one of the other main items in the game that you have to use. This you can get from a variety of different sources. You can get this from breaking gear down primarily, so as you're grinding the game, break your gear down, you'll get Ascended Shards. Next up is XP. So XP has changed quite a bit in how you obtain XP within the game. The primary way to get XP now is doing your seasonal challenges. Seasonal challenges are tied to seasonal activities and the core activities within the game. If you do these, you're going to get the absolute most XP, anywhere from 25,000 to 100,000 XP, depending on which level they are. The other thing you can do is bounties. Bounties, again, it depends on the ones you're doing. They're XP plus plus bounties. These are 12,000 XP each. Those are limited to certain weekly activities you can do every week on each of your characters. And there are, also we there are also weekly challenges that are the yellow icons that show up on the different planets. Speaking of bounties, bounties have changed quite a bit in Destiny 2. Again, as I talked about earlier, you have XP++, but you also have XP+, and just XP bounties. Your XP++, again, are your weeklies. Your XP+, are daily bounties. They rotate every day. And then your XP bounties, which again, go from 12,000 to 6,000 to 3,000, your XP ones are your repeatable bounties. And the great thing about the repeatable bounties is you can keep getting them as long as you have enough glimmer to do that. And they also give you bright dust, but they also give you the worst amount of XP. So again, bounties have changed a little bit. They've kind of simplified, but just pay attention to XP++, XP+, and XP to understand which ones will give you the right rewards. Destiny 2 has implemented a Season Pass model similar to what Fortnite does. The Season Pass goes up to rank 100, and if you get the Season Pass, you actually immediately get access to the exotic for the season, because there's always one. Plus, you get additional materials. There is a free pass that you can level at the same time, but with the Season Pass, you basically get the free and the Season Pass upgrades at the same time. So, it depends if it's value to you. Destiny also has a seasonal artifact now. The seasonal artifact has the best mods in the game for that season. So typically, there's going to be a meta within the season. That meta is typically centered around the mods at the very end of that artifact. To get that artifact leveled up, you need to level up your XP. Power level is not as critical as it was in the past because your power level only goes up 10 per each season. So again, not a big deal to do that, even with average play. But the artifact gives you the best mods that will allow you to do the best builds and again do the fun things in the season so again that artifact unlock it get the better mods so leveling has been simplified too in the leveling system you have what's called the soft cap the hard cap and the pinnacle cap for the soft cap this is what you get to the level of by playing the game so in other words if you get in the game and you just play the game don't do anything special don't do special activities you're gonna continuously get upgrades of like blue items and purple items that will eventually get you to that soft cap. And typically, most of the general activities in the game, if they are powered level enabled, are centered around that soft cap so most players can play it. Once you get past that, then there's the hard cap. The hard cap is what you do by doing the activities that show powerful rewards, again, within the director. Doing those activities will slowly give you one power level at a time upgrades until you reach your pinnacle cap. 
At the pinnacle cap, the only way you can raise up your level, which is another 10 levels, is by playing pinnacle activities. These are typically raids, 100K nightfall. Again, you'll look in there. If something says powerful, that's get to the hard cap. If something says pinnacle, that's get to the pinnacle cap. And then once you get to the pinnacle cap, you're capped out. Champions. Champions are new types of yellow bars that present challenges, again, in more upper tier activities and sometimes even lower tier. There are three types of primary champions. The first is barrier. A barrier champion, once you whittle it down to about thir first third of its health, it's gonna raise a shield that you can't shoot through. If you don't stun it, it will actually regenerate its health, which is kind of annoying. So to take it down, you're going to need an anti-barrier mod. Some of these are on certain exotics, and also each season on your arms, you're going to have a different weapon that'll allow you to do anti-barrier. So you'll wanna stun it, and to do that, you, you shoot it over time to the point where you see its bar when the bar, when the shield is up, go down to zero. You'll see it's stunned. While it's stunned, it takes additional damage. You also have Unstoppables. Unstoppables are probably not as intimidating as some of the other ones. Unstoppable, the one thing is they're unstoppable, right? They will hard charge at you. But once you stun them, you can quickly take them down. The other thing is they don't regenerate health, which is really good. So if nothing else, if there's hard charging, you can go hide, wait, and then take them out later if you need to. Finally, you have Overload Champions, which are the most annoying champions in the game. They're annoying for a couple reasons. So to stun them, if you stun them, then obviously they're stunned for a period of time and then you can start taking them out. If you stun them though, and then let them, you know, you don't shoot them, and you don't stun them again, they're immediately gonna start regenerating health. One of the other things Bungie did with most PV activities to keep it streamlined is they've adapted levels. And this is primarily centered around Nightfalls, but it extends to other activities in the game. Those levels are Adept, Hero, Legend, Master, and for Nightfall specifically, Grandmaster. The big difference in those is that sometimes those activities are power capped, depending on which one you're doing. The other thing is once they get to a certain level, they start adding champions. And sometimes they'll add more champions. They'll also add modifiers. The primary advantage of this is that across all the different PV activities that utilize this, you at least understand the, the type of activity and the level you're gonna need to go into it, right? The other thing is, as you get up and at the different activities and you get higher, you get better rewards. So if you're looking for certain materials in the game, that's the way to do it. The pinnacle of this is a Grandmaster, the Grandmaster Nightfall. In the Grandmaster Nightfall, obviously, you have more challenges and you have more buffs and debuffs put on you to make it more difficult. You're also capped at your power. So in other words, it takes you 25 levels below the pinnacle cap. So no matter what you're doing, no matter how well you level up, you're, you're yeah, stuck at that level, which makes it a very challenging activity. Finishers. Finishers are act things they've added within the game that sometimes can allow you to take some power some powerful enemies down pretty quickly. What it is 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 that as you're shooting an enemy, when you get to probably a slither of health, maybe a third, you'll see a yellow dot appear above its head. When you see that, you can perform a finisher move, and these are actually purchasable. They're different types of ones that you can use. The primary benefit of this is that again, and you use you use whatever again, depending on if you're PC or PlayStation, there's different buttons for this but you'll do an animation and instantly kill the enemy that you're with. The, and that again, that can help if you're close, doing something close up and you wanna take it out really quickly. The other thing you could do is those finishers actually can tie back in two different mods and builds that you can use. So again, it, it has a lot of utility. Lost Sectors, Lost Sectors have always been in Destiny 2, but what they've done more recently is they've done Legend and Master Lost Sectors. So again, just like I talked about in the PVE section earlier, these are power capped activities and if you do them solo you actually get a chance at obtaining exclusive exotic armor and some of it's some of the most powerful exotic armor in the game you have to do it solo and again one of the things that's nice about it is while it can be a little bit of a grind it's a guaranteed grind if you do it enough you're going to get those drops where other exotic armor it may take you randomly or waiting for zer to get it every week so strikes have always been a part of destiny 2 and again it they're, they're still in the game some of the changes are, obviously you have your main Vanguard Strikes, and these are not power capped or anything. So this is just for you know going in, maybe getting some kills, doing bounties, things like that. You also have Nightfall, and they've standardized Nightfall, which again, they have Adept, Hero, Legend, Master, and Grandmaster. And again, some of those give you power pinnacle rewards and give you additional materials that are and exotics that can drop out as rewards. So again, they also have champions added, again, depending on what level you are. So 
Nightfalls and strikes, especially nightfalls, are probably some of the most repeatable ways to get high-end gear and high-stat gear, as well as exotics in the game. So Gambit, if you haven't played Gambit before, Gambit is a combo PvP and PvE activity. In the PvE activity, you're going around killing things and getting moats, which you deposit in the bank. That bank allows you to send blockers to the other side, which can block their bank. And over time, it can actually drain the moats that they've deposited. You're both racing to get to 100 moats, and when you do that, a boss shows up. When the boss shows up, you have to go to different areas within the map, and you'll have these primeval show up. Killing those primevals will continue to increase a, a buff that will allow you to increase damage to the boss. Now, all this would be simple, except there's a PvP component. You can invade, which allows you to go to the other side and kill enemies. When you kill enemies, you can drop their moats, and during the primeval phase, the boss phase, you can actually heal the primeval by killing people. So again, there's a lot of balance between the PvE portion and when you invade, and there's some strategy mechanics. Gambit, some people don't like it. I actually think it's a fun mode. For those who've played Gambit in the past, what they did is they basically took Gambit Prime away, and they kind of took the best of Gambit Prime and combined it with the best of normal Gambit, and that's the Gambit mode we have today. So PvP has changed a, quite a bit in Destiny. So originally, PvP was a 4 play, four and 4 player match. Now you have modes that are 6 on 6. Those are your general, not power level enabled, just going in and having fun modes. You have 3 on 3 modes, which a lot of those are based around the co competitive playlist. In the competitive playlist, that's a ranked playlist where you level up and you use skill-based matchmaking to determine who you're gonna play against. And there are titles and rewards around that, so that's why some people may get into that. The ultimate version of that is Trials of Osiris, which is a reboot of Trials from Destiny 1. And this, again, it comes basically every week, and it's an end game sort of mode for PvP where again, you can get access to really high-end rewards as far as, well, first off, they have cosmetics, armor, things like that, but also certain weapons that you can only get only within Trials. There's also Iron Banner that's typically run twice a season. And Iron Banner is, again, there's a title involved with it. You can get special gear that looks kind of cool. There's special guns sometimes, but it's also, it's also surrounded around some of the same competitive modes. And the other big change that happened is they have changed it from being power enabled. So anyone can get in there. You don't have to worry about power level. Dungeons are end game PvE activities that are, are surrounded versus raids where it's six people, it's three people, and you can even solo them, right? It's a little more difficult, but you can, and there's some achievements around that. But they're three player activities that's a little easier to get a fire team together to play. Typically, they have a few bosses, one at the end, somewhere in the middle. They have a jumping puzzle. They'll have a couple puzzles um, within them. And the pattern right now is they're doing two of those a year. So again, there's a ton of great dungeons within the game. Check them out. Again, they also have exclusive weapons, and some of those are some of the best weapons in the game. So if you're into PvP activities, if you haven't gotten yourself ready for a raid, and you want to try something out that's maybe a little simpler, kind of between a raid and like strikes, this would be a good activity for you to try. They're a lot of fun. Obviously raids, raids are some of the most important and critical things within Destiny 2. They're the end game PvE content. And so for Destiny 2, they are slowly bringing back and reprising raids from Destiny 1. So they've done Vault of Glass, they've done King's Fall, they'll probably do Wrath of Machine at some point. There are some raids that have been taken out like Leviathan and Scourge of the Past, but there have been raids that have been added. So again, raids are about, if you haven't played them before, raids are about mechanics, in other words, puzzles, things like that. You typically a jumping puzzle. And also figure out how to do the best boss DPS because there's typically multiple bosses within a raid activity. These are not these are activities that you need to find a fire team, you need to be on mic, and you're gonna they require six people. You can do it with less, there are people who have done that, but obviously that's more difficult. One of the other advantages of raids is that they usually have an exotic that's usually one of the best exotics out of that season. And usually it'll get nerfed at some point. So you want to get in and get in as quickly as possible. Armor mods. So there was a new reboot of base of the mod system within Destiny 2 for armor because it was just armor was kind of useless at that point earlier in this in the game. And for armor mods now, you can get many of the base ones by just playing the game. By break by turning in bounties, by breaking down legendary gear. You'll just get these as you play the game. The other ones are again obtained through Ada 1. She will give you a lot of these. And Ada 1 is one that have them on rotation. So you'll have things that are called Charge of Light, 
those are for doing specific builds. You'll have Elemental Wells, those are for specific builds. And then there are Warmind ones, and those are for specific builds. So again, I'm not gonna get into all the details. Again, if you're really interested, I do have a ton of builds and videos on making builds on my channel, so check those out. But the Armor Mod system is used primarily for, again, enhancing and getting prepared for that end game PV content. The other thing is there are seasonal mods that happen every season. So as long as you get the seasonal pass, you're gonna get access to things that typically sometimes there's at least one mod that's completely broken that they'll, again, because it's a season, they don't have to worry about nerfing it because it just go away. But again, getting those seasonal mods are really good opportunities to have the best builds in the game. So one of the things that's changed is that they have primarily gone to a much more simplified way than how your skill tree works for your subclasses. Now everyone has aspects and fragments. Aspects are your primary things on your on your character that differentiate that class from every other class in the game. And again, they're gonna change depending on whether you're on solar or arc or void. Your fragments are, you have a ton of those, and because of that, you can customize them. You only have so many points for these. And again, they're based on the type of aspects that you put in. But these fragments can really make a big difference in how your build crafting works. So get these unlocked because these are real difference makers in the game. The other thing, as, as we talk about it, there's also stasis that was added to the game. And stasis is originally where this aspects and fragments type of method came up. Stasis is a new element that freezes people. And again, there's some really overpowered builds for that as well. So again, aspects and fragments now have a simplified, streamlined way to look at how each of your subclasses are unique and how you can customize them to your needs. And that's the video, guys. Again, I just want to give you some quick tips, quick updates on things that have changed between Destiny 1, potentially, and Destiny 2, or different years of Destiny 2. Hopefully this was useful for you, and if it was, feel free to like the video, subscribe my channel, and jump into my Discord and we can talk about it further. And again, if you're not clear on some of this, feel free to check all of my playlists where I go over guides for new returning players and at different varying levels of experience in the game. And I'll see you guys in the tower.